Hi everybody, welcome to the online class of Ideal English Higher Secondary School. In this video, we are going to continue our chapter, The Hour of Truth. In last class, we had uh, covered the first part of the chapter, hope you remember. So we have, we had discussed um, what are one act plays, what are, how do we prepare one act play, what are the things we bear we have to bear in mind when you preparing uh, the script of a play and what is settings how do we um, express the dialogues then the facial expression of the characters in the script all those things we had discussed in the first part and the beginning part of the uh, one act play also was discussed there so there we had seen um, the family members of mr baldin are in a heated discussion. They were eagerly waiting for the head of the family to come home. He had gone outside. And um, he, he had gone to meet his friend uh, named Gresham, who had been jailed. And he was his boss in the bank too. So as we had said, Mr. Baldwin was a truthful man. And uh, with, in his discussion with Gresham, Gresham had offered Mr. Baldin a big amount of money. He had offered him a hundred thousand dollars just to save him from the jail. Gresham asked Baldin just to say in the court, I don't remember. Just say this when they ask you questions, you don't have to lie anything, you don't have to uh, do something more, you just say a few words, three words. I don't remember, which is enough for Gresham to escape from the jail. And uh, Gresham had offered Baldin $100,000. So he shares this incident with his family members. And now he sees a great change in their attitude. So far they were arguing against Gresham and they were uh, pressing Baldin to send Gresham to jail, but as he revealed Gresham had offered him money, a good amount of money, their attitude changed. Now they are, start, they are talking in favor of Gresham. They started to feel pity for Gresham and they want him to be saved. So that's what we are going to see here. So Baldin reveals that he was offered $100,000 by Gresham just to say, I don't remember in the court. Evie asks, what? She, she couldn't believe, what? I have got only a few years to live, but I will live those as I have lived the rest of my life. I'll go to my grave clean. So um, as, this, as Martha hears this, uh, this news, she surprised when she asked what then um Baldin says this i have lived the, my life so far as a clean man as a truthful man and i have to go to my grave as a clean man as i lived so far so i won't uh, i won't do anything wrong to my conscience to my inner heart right so these lines are very important sometimes these are asked for examination uh, giving this, uh, taking this part, uh, who spoke these words and what is this, the incident, what is the context of these um, words, all those things were asked. So remember, before, um, before you start to listen to the class, you should read the textual part at least two times. Read the text two times and use your textbook to read. Don't pause the video and read looking at the mobile. Instead, you can read it in your textbook itself so that you can underline if you find any difficult words or uh, you can write the meanings there. Okay, so use your textbook to read the textual part and read it at least twice before listening to the class. And after listening, read it once more. Okay, so uh, these lines are important. You can mark it there. 
Then uh, Balin says he lived as a truthful man so far and he want to give, go to his grave. He want to die as a clean man. So he should live the rest of his life also as a honest man. As an honest man. Martha again asked Robert Baldwin. He put it aside for me without anybody knowing it. It is out of his private fortune, he says. It's not the depositor's money as if that made any difference. Uh, Martha, his wife again, um, she couldn't believe that he was offered money. Then uh, Baldwin continues that. Uh, he says uh, it is from his private money. It is not the depositor's money. And he saved this for him. And Evie, as if hypnotized, he offered you $100,000. She couldn't believe to. Baldwin smiling at her amazement. I could have had it for the one word, yes, or even for nodding my head or a look of the eyes. If I said just a yes, I could have earned that $1,000. Otherwise, just by nodding my head, I could have. Otherwise, by a look in a positive way, I could have won that money. John, how? How do you know he meant it? Did he mean it actually, or was he tell, uh, was he kidding you? Baldwin, his words is good. His word is good, John. Even now, Baldwin, he never lied to me, John. He poses. Suppose my eyes must have shown something I didn't feel. He noticed it. He unlocked the drawer and showed me the hundred thousand. So uh, as ba uh, Gresham said to said to this to me, uh, unknowingly, my face must have shown something because uh, he opened the drawer, he opened the drawer and showed me the hundred thousand dollars. He he showed Gresham showed the money to Baldwin. It is a hundred thousand dollar notes bills. So he meant it. It was not just kidding. John, again, they all were caught by surprise. They couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe this, the movement. Then uh, they asked Costin again, Costin to confirm it. In cash, Baldwin, in thousand dollars bills. Yes, in cash, in bills. They were genuine. I examined them. They were not fake notes. They were not pseudo money. They were genuine notes, genuine bills. And I examined it. He was a banker. He was working in a bank and he could examine words, uh, uh, notes like that, right? Evie slowly. And for that, he wants you to say, I don't remember. And for that $100,000, you have to just say, I don't remember. Is that what he wants? Smiling, just that. Three words only. John, but you won't. Will you, Father? You won't, right? Baldwin shaking his head. Those three words would choke me if I tried to speak them. For some other man, perhaps it would be easy, but for me, all of my paws would rise up and strike me in the face. Would mean to the world that for years I had been living a liar that I was not the honorable man I thought I was. When John Gresham offered me money, I was angry. But when I re rejected it and he showed no surprise, then I was pleased. It was a compliment. Don't you think so? Then Baldwin says, uh, those three words, if I spoke those three words, if I speak, I don't remember in the court, those three words would choke me, would suffocate me, would, that's enough to kill myself. Because the whole world will believe that so far I was living as a liar. Actually, I, I have, now I have the reputation of a um, truthful man, an honest man. People see me like that. But if I speak these three words in the court, if I say I don't remember, all my past life will be in vain and the people will start to think that I was a liar. And when uh, Gresham offered the money, 
I, I was angry because uh, Gresham is the one who knows best. He knows me best because he is my close friend. Even though he is my boss, he's very close friend to me. So he knows me for more than 30 years and he offered me that money. Then I was very angry. And, but when I rejected, that, that didn't surprise him. I rejected the amount, still he was not surprised. That made me happy because he didn't expect me to accept the money. So that's a compliment, right? He understood me very well. And when he was offering the money, he wasn't hoping me to accept it. So it's a compliment for me. John, now um, you can see the slight changes that takes place in their attitude and towards the end of the play, what is uh, their attitude? How do they uh, come up with their opinions? You can see that. John, a compliment which cost you $100,000. This is a compliment, but it cost $100,000, father. You need that compliment which cost you $100,000. Martha, after a pause, will the depositors lose much, Robert? Will the depositors? So far, they didn't want to know that. Will the depositors lose or will someone be affected by the uh, uh, collapse of the bank? They didn't want to know that. But now they want to know, will it affect the depositors? Baldin, emphatically, he he's very uh, strong in that. He is very uh, uh, sure about it. The depositors will not lose a cent. They won't lose a cent. Not a penny, not a, a single dollar they will lose. Evie, surprised. But the paper said, but the paper said so and so, but in interrupting, they had to print something they guessed. I know, I tell you, it is not real. The papers, they have to celebrate any news that come in front of them. They have to print something, so they will print whatever comes to their mind. It is not truth. Martha, but you never said so before. Or you didn't say this before. Baldin, I left that for Gresham. It will come out tomorrow. I left those, those parts to Gresham. I expected him to tell to the press, but he didn't. Anyway, all these things will come to light by tomorrow. John, why tomorrow? Why did you say so before? The papers asked you often enough. Why did you postpone it for tomorrow? You could have said yesterday itself when the papers asked you questions. Why didn't you do so? Then John asks his father. Baldin, nothing forced me to answer John. I didn't feel like answering that to the papers. Nothing forced me. There is a pause. They stopped. John, they are going to punish Gresham, aren't they? Now, John feels a, a kind of sympathy towards Gresham. Then he asks, they are going to punish Gresham, aren't they? Well, then I am afraid so. He's my friend. He, uh, I am so sad that to him to be sent to jail. But it happens. John, what for? Why are you sorry for uh, why he was, what for? As Baldin says, I am afraid so. I am afraid that he will be sent to jail. What for? He asks. He wants to know what for. Baldin says, misappropriating the funds of the depositors for misappropriating, doing, uh, misusing the money of the depositors. So he is going to be sent to jail. John interrupting. Oh, I know that. He was not asking actually that. What for? He asks what for? But uh, what for are you afraid of? That's what he was asking, right? But uh, Baldin took it that what for he is sent to jail. Then he interrupts his words and says, but what crime has he committed? What crime has uh, Gresham committed? So far, when they were talking against Gresham, they, they were not eager to know what crime was committed by Gresham. But now he, he wanted to know what, actually, what crime did he do? What, uh, what crime has he committed? Baldwin, that's a crime, John, misappropriating the fund. Even if the depositors would know, lose nothing, misappropriation itself is a crime. 
But if nobody loses anything, anything by it, he will ask. But Father, he misappropriated, that's right. But if nobody loses a cent, then what's wrong? Well, then it's a crime nevertheless. Even if none lose anything, it's a crime still. And they are going to punish him for it. Berlin, they can't let him go, John. He's too conspicuous. So they are going to punish Gresham for that. Berlin says, yes, he's going to be punished. He's too conspicuous. He's a man known by many person. So this, this case is not going to be unnoticed. He'll be punished. John asks, do you think that's right, governor? Governor means father here. There, it's their slang, it is right. It may be us. Governor means father. Do you think that's right, governor? Father, is it right to send Gresham to jail? Started to uh, find the change in his question. In the beginning, we had seen he was infuriated why father wanted to help Gresham, right? But now the change you can notice here. Baldin, my opinion doesn't matter, John. What do I think? It doesn't matter. What is the truth? That matters. That matters. My opinion doesn't matter, John. John, but what do you think, Father? What, what do you think? Yes, I know that. What's your opinion, Baldin? I think, I think that I'm sorry for John Gresham. Terribly sorry. I'm sorry for him. He'll be sent to jail, and I feel sorry for that. John, slowly, it is nothing but a technicality that nobody loses a cent. It's rather hard on Gresham, I see. Father, if nobody loses a cent, then why should, he, why should he be sent to jail? It is just a technicality, a technical error that can be excused, right? Why should he be sent to jail? Now, nobody loses a cent. Baldwin, after a pause, yes, John. Evie timidly, she was, she's not that bold to ask, still she asked, would it be such an awful thing, Father, if you let him off? And if you leave him, would it be an awful thing? It's a bad thing, Father, smiling. I wish I could, Evie, but I am not the judge. I wish I could save him, but I am not the judge. Evie, no, but you are not the judge, I know, but what but? Uh, Evie wants to say so that, uh, Father, even, even though you are not the judge, you can do something to save him. But she didn't complete, no. But what, Evie? You are the only witness against him. Father, you are the only witness against him. Walden, nonplussed, Evie, non confused. What does she mean? He didn't get it first. None plus means confused, baffled. Evie, what do you mean? John, she's right, governor. She's right, father. Then John interferes. Baldin, you too, John? John, it's going to be a nasty mess if they put John Gresham in jail with your own son named after him. It's going to be pleasant for me. John Gresham Baldwin. Then uh, John takes a psychological move. Um, he says, John was named after John Gresham, right, his friend. As uh, Baldwin was so close with John Gresham, he gave his friend's name to his son. So his son was named after John Gresham. So his name was John Gresham Baldwin. So, Father, a man with my name is to be sent to jail. It is, it is very bad, he says. Baldwin, a Martha after a post, Robert, I'm not sure I understood what you said before. What did Mr. Gresham want you to do for him? She again starts from the beginning. I didn't understand what you said. What, actually, what did he want you say? Want you to say, Baldwin? get him off tomorrow. He wanted me to save him from the jail, to get him out of the jail tomorrow. Martha, you could do that. Can you do that? If you want, if you, if you want that, are you able to do that? Baldwin, yes. If I wanted, I could do that. 
Martha, how? How can you? How can you help him? How can you save him from the jail, Baldwin? By answering, I don't remember when they ask me dangerous questions. So next tomorrow it is the trial of his this case, and I'll be there in the stand. Stand means a place where the uh, witness will be put to ask questions. So then when they ask me dangerous question, if I say I don't remember, then there is no other witness against Gresham, then he'll be released, he'll be free. Martha, oh, and you do remember? And you remember things then? Baldin, yes, nearly everything. I remember nearly everything. John, no matter what they ask you, whatever they ask you, you remember all those things? Baldin, I can always refresh my memory. You see, I have no. John asks, Father, if they ask you anything about the case, uh, can you answer? Do you remember all those things? Then Baldin says, if I don't remember it completely, I have kept notes with me. I can refresh my memory and I can tell this in court. Then John asks, but without those notes, you wouldn't remember. Oh, you keep notes with you. So without those notes, you won't remember. So here, John tries to prove that Baldin has forgetfulness. So if he says, I don't remember in the court, it is not going to be a lie. He wanted to prove that. That's why he asked this question. Right. As uh, Baldin shows him notes, I have kept all those things in the notes. He asks, but without those notes, you wouldn't remember. You need this note to remember all these incidents, right, Father? What do you mean, John? Baldi didn't get what, what like move is this? John, without answering, as a matter of fact, you will have to rely on your notes nearly all together, would you? So, in fact, you will have to depend on these notes to give evidence to bear witness against Gresham, right, Father? Baldin, everybody else does the same thing, not only me, everybody else who stand there in the court, they use notes. It's a common thing, right? What's special with that? John, then it won't be far from the truth if you say, I don't remember. Then Father, if you have to depend on the notes to say all the things against Gresham, it's not far from the truth if you say, I don't remember. That's right. That's truth, no? You don't remember. That's why you keep the notes with you. So if you say, I don't remember, it's not far from truth. Martha, I don't see that Mr. Gresham is asking so much of you. Martha interferes. And I think uh, Baldin doesn't... Uh, Gresham doesn't ask you so much just to say three words, right? He doesn't ask you to do something more, only a few things. It is not too much, I don't think so. So in the beginning we had seen Martha, she was very proud of her uh, husband's stance, her husband's attitude, her husband's uh, truthfulness, right? She was very proud of, we had seen it in the beginning. Now, look, uh, she is also supporting Gresham and she says, if uh, he, do, he doesn't ask you to do so much so many things just to say three words martha robert i am as honorable as you are Baldin, i know you are an honorable man a truthful man and i am also an honorable as uh, like you but in such case we have to think practically that that's what Martha was about to say, right? Baldin, that goes without saying, Martha. I know you also are an honorable person. Martha, it doesn't seem right to me to send an old friend to jail. As he speaks, she holds up her hand. Now, don't interrupt me. I have been thinking the day John was baptized, when Mr. Gresham stood sponsor for him, how proud we were. And when he, we came home from the church, you said, do you remember what you said, Robert? Martha says, Baldin, it is not the right thing to send your 
old friend, your great friend who has who had been with you for 30, more than 30 years. So it's not fair to send him to jail. Then uh, uh, Baldwin was about to say something, but Martha interferes and she holds on the hand of Robert Baldwin and she continues. She says, uh, don't you remember the incident that took place on the day when Joe was baptized? He, uh, Gresham stood as the sponsor. Is the, uh, he was the sponsor of the baptist. Uh, the, the in, uh, ceremony and do you remember what you said when we after we reaching home you said something do you remember Baldwin no what was it what did I say I don't remember Martha you said Martha may our son always live up to the name which we have given him do you remember that you said Martha may our son live up to the name we have, we have given him the name of John Gresham. May he live up to the name. He, got, he has got a name of a great person. May he live up to the name. Do you remember? Baldwin, yes, dimly. Oh, now I remember dimly. John, huh, only dimly, Ghana. Oh, you remember only dimly, Father? Baldwin, what do you mean, John? Martha giving John no opportunity to answer. It would be sad, very sad, if the name of John Gresham, our son's name, should come to grief through you, Robert. So it's very bad thing, uh, Robert, if our son's name, his son's name means the same name is there for Gresham, his friend, right? Because the son was named after him. So it is a very sad thing that the na name of John Gresham, our son's name, should come to grave through your, your Robert. So, be because of you, if Gresham is sent to jail, it is very sad because he has our son's name. That's what Martha's justification. Baldwin, after a pause, Martha, are you telling me to accept the bribe money that John Gresham offered me? You want me to accept the money? Evie, why do you call it bribe money, father? Why do you call it bribe money? Baldin, bitterly. Why indeed? Gresham had a prettier name for it. He said that he had underpaid me all these years. You know, I was getting only $60 a week when the crash came. So, um, Evie was, he, Evie couldn't bear. Father calls that money. Um, bribe money the same way gresham had also said him a better name he said this is your own money i was underpaying you i didn't pay as much as you deserve for your work for your worth so i was underpaying and i kept this money from your salary so the whole money belongs to you it is yours actually so he had some other name other than bribe money um, he said that he had underpaid me all these years. You know, I was getting only $60 a week when the crash came. So he was paid only $60 in a week. So, uh, so this money was saved from Baldwin's own salary, actually, what he deserved. John impassionately, yes, yes, actually, you were underpaid father. That's correct. Baldin, he said a hundred thousand represented the difference between what he had paid me and what I had actually been worth to him. Baldin, uh, Gresham told me the hundred thousand dollars is just the money between what I was paid and what I actually was worth. So I was underpaid. I re I received only less amount than what I actually deserved so this money really in fact this money belonged to me that's what gresham told me martha that's no less than true robert you have worked for him very faithfully that's true right baldin that's true right robert you have worked very faithfully for him so for sure that was your money you could have accepted it Baldwin, he said that if he had paid me what he should have, I would have put my, by more than a hundred thousand by now. 
But uh, Gresham said to me that if he had paid me what I deserved in time, I should have put by, I should have saved money more than this thousand dollars. If Gresham had paid me duly the correct amount as I deserved in time, I could have saved more money, more than a thousand dollars, Gresham told me. And all these confessions are only now after being jailed. Right. John, that's so, isn't it? That that's correct, Dad. That's correct. That would have happened. Baldwin, who knows? I never asked him to raise my salary. When he raised it, it was of his own accord. There is a pause. He looks around. Well, what do you think of a TV? So Baldwin never asked his friend Gresham to raise his salary. And whenever Gresham raised his salary, it was on his accord or because of his own opinion. It was not because Baldin forced, Baldin asked, Baldin didn't demand a salary hike actually. Whenever the salary was raised, it was because of Gresham's own thought. And he looks at everybody and he asks, what do you think of it, Evie? Evie hesitantly, she's not ready to answer. She, if you go on the stand tomorrow, she's asked, so have you made up your mind to go to the stand tomorrow? Yes. And they put Gre John Gresham in jail. What will people say? And when you say all these things, all the, all the things that you know in the court and he will be put in jail, what will people say? Baldin, they'll say I have done my duty. People will say that I have done my duty. Evie, when they find out that they haven't lost any money, when John Gresham tells them that they, he will pay back every cent, then they won't want him to go to jail. They'll feel sorry for him. But Father, when people know that they won't lose a cent, and when John Gresham tell them that he will pay back each cent of their money, they won't want Gresham to be sent to jail. They will feel sorry for him. They won't want him to be jailed. Baldwin, yes, I believe that. I hope so. I think so. They, they may feel sorry for him. John, and they won't feel too kindly disposed towards the man who helped put him in jail. Not only that father, they won't feel they won't feel kind towards the person who sent him to jail. So if you send Gresham to jail by witnessing, bear witnessing, bearing witness in the court, and he, he'll be jailed, then the people won't feel kind towards you first. Martha, they'll say you went back on an old front door, but they'll say you didn't do well with your front. Gresham had been your close friend. And if you send him to jail, they will say, Baldin didn't do well with his friend. John, when you pull out of your notes in court to be sure of sending him to jail, he breaks off with a snort. Especially, especially he, uh, you, when you pull out your notes to make sure that he, you are sending him to jail because you do not remember those things completely, then you will use a note. So when you take the notes to ensure that you are sending him to jail, people won't feel kind towards you, Father. And he's not, he, uh, he gives us a sigh, a snort. Evie, and Mr. Gresham hasn't done anything really wrong. And he didn't do anything really wrong, Father. John, it's a technicality, that's what it is. Nobody loses a cent, nobody wants to see him punished. It's just a technicality that nobody will lose anything if he except you, Father. So nobody, uh, nobody wants to see him punished except you, Father. So you are the only person who wants to see him jailed. So you, you must remember what happened in the beginning when uh, Baldwin was outside. All the three members of the family, they were they were thinking, why does our father help Gresham? He should be jailed, right? So now, do you see what they say? You are the only person who wants to send him to jail, right? 
John, yes, and you are willing to jail the man after whom you named your son. Again, he, he uses a um, psychological way, right? He says, uh, uh, you are willing to jail the man after whom you named your son. You named me after him, and you want him to, to be jailed, Father. Martha, after a pause, I believe in being merciful, Robert. I believe in being merciful. Be merciful, Robert. So now they are saying he's a cruel man. He's the only person who wanted to send Gresham to jail. Be merciful, Robert. Baldwin, merciful. So, you know, this is exactly what happens to a truthful person in a corrupted society. People always will mock them, will criticize him, uh, they will come against them, they will be destitute, they will be left alone, right? They, they will be addressed to be impractical. That happens. A truthful man finds it difficult to live in a corrupted society. But a truthful man will be a truthful man always, right? They do not expect any good name from the society, they will do what's right to their concepts, to their inner heart, right? So, Baldwin asks, merciful, you want to be merciful? Martha, Mr. Gresham has always been very good to you. There is another post. Curiously enough, they do not seem to be able to meet each other's eyes. So even they, they say, say all these things, they do not look at the eyes. That happens, right? When someone says false, someone uh, lie, it is very hard to look at the eye and say, right? So now they do not look each other's eyes. Martha, oh well, what are you going to do now, Robert? What are you going to do? Baldwin, what do you mean? You have been out of work since the bank closed. So if uh, you have been without work since the bank closed, if you send Gresham jailed, you won't have any job. So they, they bring so many reasons why he shouldn't be sent to jail, right? He's so close in front of you. After him, you named you of your son, and he stood as a sponsor at the time of when John was baptized, and now you are jobless. Since the bank was closed, you don't have job. So if you don't send aggression to jail, you can go for work there too. Baldwin shrugging his shoulder. Oh, I, I'll find a position. I'll find a position, John. If Gresham doesn't go to jail, he'll start in business again, won't he? And he can't offer you anything less than a partnership. So if Baldwin does, if Gresham doesn't go to jail, he'll again start a business, right, Father? He, it's sure he'll start a business and he'll offer nothing less than a partnership. A partnership? He's confused. Partnership. Gresham is going to offer me a partnership, John, with meaning. With the 100,000 capital you could put in the business debt. Yes. With the 100,000 capital. So, so far they didn't ask him accept the money directly. They were coming up with so many justification why Gresham shouldn't, sent, shouldn't be sent to jail. They were justifying. And so far, they were not asking Baldwin to accept the money. Now, slowly, John started. Uh, you could have used that 100,000 capital you could put in the business debt. If you accept the money, you could put it in a business. Baldwin, John, John, of course, the capital doesn't matter. He'll owe you quite a debt of gratitude besides. It is not just the, uh, just that amount. He will owe you a debt of gratitude. You saved him from the jail. So, of course, he will have a debt of gratitude towards you. Right? So, in that way also, he'll be offering you something more. There is a pause. Martha, a hundred thousand would mean a great deal to us. Now only they start about accepting the money. When uh, John, uh, uh, when Baldwin was rejecting all the other um, Justification they came up with, now they start to talk about the money. 
Martha. A hundred thousand would mean a great deal to us, Robert. If you don't find a position soon, John will have to support us. Uh, it is a great amount money, uh, amount of money, and if you don't find a position uh, soon, John will have to support the whole family, and it would be very difficult for him, John. On thirty dollars a week, just thirty dollars he earns a week. That that won't go very far. So that won't enough for for our family to make both end meet. So uh, you you will have to find a position soon. That is not that easy, um, Martha. It's not fair to John. So if you if you give the whole burden of the family uh, on the shoulder of uh, John, it's not fair to him. He's earning only thirty uh, per week, and it is very it would be very difficult for him to take care of our family. That's not fair, John. Angrily, oh, don't bother about me. My thing is not a case, mother. It doesn't matter. Evie begins to weep. So now Evie started to weep. Look here, governor. You have said nothing to the papers. You say nothing to nothing more tomorrow. What does it amount to? But sticking to your front, it's the sky thing to do. He had, he would do as much as as much for you. So, father, you didn't say anything to the paper. So you are now in a safe position. Before, in the beginning, they were blaming him for not sharing anything anything to the papers, right? Now they are saying, father, you have been shared anything to the papers. So at present, you are in a nice position. You are in a safe position. And tomorrow also, you are not going to say anything. That's not a wrong thing because you are doing all these things for your friend. Everybody would say that. Everybody would think that Baldwin saved his friend. That's a fair thing. That's that's a square thing. Means uh, that's a fair thing to do, right? Remember what they said in the beginning. Uh, uh, people are talking bad. You are under suspicion too. You do not say anything about him to the paper, so you are under the cloud of suspicion, right? Now he says people will think it is uh, Gresham just saved his friend. That's a square thing to do. That's fair. Baldwin looks appealingly from one face to another. They are averted. Then now Baldwin looks at each one's face, but they they couldn't face him directly because they themselves know that they are supporting a wrong thing, right? You you want me to take this money? There is no answer. He Baldwin uh, asks each one. No answer. Say yes. One of you, still no answer or no. Say yes or no. No answer. A long, a long pause. Finally, I couldn't go into partnership with Gresham. I can't do that. I won't go in partnership with Gresham. Then Martha promptly, Why not? Why can't you in, be a partner with him, Baldwin? People wouldn't trust him. People wouldn't trust. So I can't be a partner. Then again, John comes with another solution. Then you could go into business with someone else. That a hundred thousand is a lot of money. That's okay, Father. If you can't go in partnership with Gresham, that's okay. That doesn't matter. You can use the amount and join someone else to a business. There is again so many other options. Baldwin walks to the window, looks out. God knows, I I never thought this day would come. I know, I know. No matter how you try to excuse it, I know that if I take this money, I do a dishonorable thing, and you know it. You and you and you, all of you, come admit it. And Balin is very sad. He didn't expect his family members themselves will come against his truthfulness. I, I didn't expect this day would come. And whatever happens, I won't accept the money. I won't, uh, Baldwin won't accept that money. I know if I take the money, I do a dishonorable thing. That's not the right thing to do. And you know it, you and you. And each one of you know, you know it, you know it, and you know it. Everybody all of you know that it is a dishonorable thing. But when it is the money, you do not think that way. John 
absolutely nobody will ever hear of it. John gives a solution. Father, if you accept the money, it is a, maybe a dishonorable thing, but nobody will know it. Nobody will ever hear of it. Baldwin, but amongst ourselves, John, whatever we are to, to the world, let's be honest with each other, the four of us. Yes, nobody will know it, but we know each other. We know it, but whatever the world thinks, that doesn't matter. We can be truthful to each other. The four of us, well, his glance travels from John to Evie, whose head is bowed from, from her to his wife, who is apparently busy with her knitting. He rises, Martha's head looks into her eyes, he shudders. So he looks at each one's face and they avoid their look. Someone looks down, downward, someone is busy with some other thing, then he rises, Martha's uh, head, and he says, Shams, liar, hypocrites, thieves, and I know better than any of you. We have seen our souls naked, and they stink to almighty heaven. Well, why don't you answer me? You are liars, you are hypocrites. Thieves, Shams means a fake, not real thing. You are not the real you, what you, you are seen outside. Right, so he calls them names, and can you anybody answer me? We he, four can know that if the world does not know about what is happening there, we four, four know each other, right? Let's be truthful to each other. Martha feebly, it's not wrong, Robert. It's not wrong thing, Robert. She again justifies, Baldwin, it's not right. John, facing him steadily. Now, a hundred thousand is a lot of money, Dad. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it is right or wrong. A hundred thousand is a great money, Father. It's a lot of money, Dad. Baldwin, nodding slowly. You can look at my eyes now, my son, can't you? Now you, you directly look at me. Then how, how bad it is, you are looking at my eyes and you say, it is right or wrong, a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money. John, without moving, Dad, why did you refuse? Wasn't it because you were afraid of what you'd say? Father, why did you refuse the money to take? Wasn't it because you're, you are afraid that what we would say? If I, I accept the money, what would my family would say? Isn't that because of that? Is it because of that you refuse the money? Baldwin, after a long pause, yes, John. John, well, nobody will ever know it. Oh, if, it, if that's the case, don't be afraid, Father, nobody will ever know it. Baldwin, Except the four of us. Except the four of us, right? Nobody will know that, he says. Then except the four of us. John, yes, Father. John looks out and says, now he thinks that uh, Baldwin is, has changed, is gradually changing and he's going to accept the money. John looks out and says, someone is coming. So as he was looking outside, someone was coming. Martha raising her head. Who is it? John, I can't see with a sudden apprehension, it's look, it looks like Marshall. He couldn't identify it in the beginning, then later uh, he understood it is Marshall. Marshall, the doorbell rings, they are motionless as a maid enters to at one side and goes out the other, the maid re-enters. So they hear the doorbells and they stand motionless uh, to know who is it, then the maid. Uh, of their family, the one who do the household chores, she comes, enters from one corner and she goes out from the, the other. Actually, she is going to open the door. Again, she re enters. The maid says, A gentleman to see you, sir. Baldwin, pulling himself together, getting ready. Uh, who? Me? To, to see me? The maid. Sir, the maid. Yes, sir. She hands him a card on a salver. She give him a card. 
a visitor's card in a silver, in a plate, in a um, silver plate uh, as a form of formality. They use this. Okay, Berlin, it's Marshall. Martha, the president of the third national. Marshall means the president of the third national bank. Berlin, yes. What does he want here? What does he want here? The maid. Shall I show him in, sir? Shall I allow him in, sir? Berlin, yes, yes, by all means. The maid goes out. Martha crossing to him quickly. Robert, be careful of what you say. You are to go on the stand tomorrow. Martha blocks him, uh, blocks Robert. Uh, Robert, careful, uh, don't, don't say this and that to him. Um, tomorrow you have to go there in the stand, in the court. So do, don't say this and that to him. He, she takes precautions, gives precautions to him. Baldin nervously, yes, yes, I'll look out. Okay, I know, I know what to do, I shall do. The maid re-enters, opening the door for marshals. Again, the maid enters and opens the door to marshal. Marshal coming into the room very buoyantly, very actively he comes to the room. Well, well, spending the afternoon indoors. How are you, Mrs. Baldin? He shakes hands cordially, and you, Baldin. So Marshall enters to the house and, oh, spending the afternoon uh, indoor, uh, you haven't gone outside today, and how is everything? Then he shakes hands with Mrs. Baldin, Martha, and uh, Baldin. Martha, we were just going out. Uh, yes, we, we were about to leave. Come, Evie. Then uh, they went outside. Marshall, oh, you needn't go on my account. You can hear what I have to say. So you, you need not to go because of me. Uh, you also can hear what I have to say. He turns to the head of the family, Baldin. Baldin, if you feel like coming around the third national, some, some, third national sometime this week, you'll find a position waiting for you. Baldin, uh, if you get time this week, come around there to the third nationals and a position is waiting for you there. Baldin, thunderstruck. Uh, Wonder, do you mean that? Do you mean that, Marshall? Do you mean I have a job there in your bank in the third national? Actually, the third national means a bigger bank, a bank of the other banks, right? Just like we have a reserve bank, no? So, the uh, third national is the uh, bank higher than the uh, other banks in the country. So, do, do you mean that, Marshall? Marshall, smiling. I wouldn't say if it if I didn't. I mean it. If I didn't mean, I wouldn't say that. He continues more seriously. I was to I was in to see Gresham this afternoon. He told me about the offer he had made you, but he knew that no amount of money would make you do something you thought wrong. So this afternoon I went to meet Gresham and I talked with him. Then he said, no amount of money would make you change your mind. When I talked with Gresham, he told me, he offered you money, a thousand dollars, and still you were not ready to accept the money. He said, you are such a truthful man. So, but he knew that no amount of money would make you do something you thought wrong. Baldin, he paid you the supreme compliment rather than go to trial with you to testify against him, he confessed and he, he gave you a supreme compliment. But the compliment that he had given you is very great. This is the greatest compliment that you will ever get. And he himself, he confessed rather than going to a trial with you. So he confessed and he accepted uh, the uh, crime. Baldin singing into a chair, confessed. Oh, he confessed. Confess. Marshall told the whole story. Yes, he told the whole story. He turns to Martha. I can only say to you what every man will be saying tomorrow. How highly I honor and respect your husband. How sincere. Now, Mr. Marshall, he's, he, he's the president of Third National. He's a great man. He turns to Martha and uh, he says, 
um, you are very lucky to have such a husband. I respect him. Not only me, the whole world is going to respect him tomorrow. Um, the, what every man will be saying tomorrow, how high, highly I honor and respect your husband. How sincerely, Martha, seizing his hand piteously, please, please, can't you see he's crying? Please stop, don't talk so more, he's crying. And the curtain falls. So that's the story, right? Uh, how money plays cute tricks, strange trick. What is the influential a feature of money? Money has that power. Money influences people. It, it has a corrupting influence on people's attitude and morals. That's what we find here. Uh, some people change their attitude and uh, their character as per the money, but the truthful man always remain truthful. No money, no other reward can make any change. Right. So here, uh, Mr. Berlin was duly paid to his uh, truthfulness. He got a better job in a better um, bank with a high reputation. The, uh, the uh, president of the bank himself respect him for his uh, truthfulness. So the, this is uh, the, st the uh, story of the one act play is very good, very interesting. We can see the one who commit mistake, one who commit crime would be put in jail and the one who stick always, always uh, stick to truth and remain truthful throughout will be rewarded in the end. So it's, it gives us very good message too, right? Okay, so uh, I've, now you have to read the story once more, understanding each and every line. As I said, uh, some, a particular portion from the chapter would be taken and, uh, for, exa uh, for your examination and they'll be asking you a question, who is the he mentioned here? What are they talking about? Uh, who does the governor here mean? So questions like this, this may be asked from the textual part itself. So it is very important to read the text, understanding the meaning. Okay, so if you have any doubt in any particular part, you can watch the video again. And st if you still need clarification, you can contact me through WhatsApp. Okay, well, you are free to text or send voice clips to me. I, I'll be responding. Okay, then um, thank you for watching. That's all for today. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day.